day. So I'm Serena. I'm um, one of the technicians here, and I think I know lots of you, um, but not some of you. And before all this, this kind of crazy lockdown, we had regular drop-ins for people to come into the workshop, into our space, and participate and take part in free pop-up activities. But we can't do that now. So this is kind of in place of that a really, really simple activity, but something that you can do at home. Now, I base this around woodblock printing. So woodblock, this is Japanese ply. So this is a kind of um, a thin plywood that um, would be cut into in traditional Japanese woodblock printing, otherwise known as mokuhanga. So that's the other name for Japanese woodblock printing. I'm sure that some of you will have seen some incredible images by um, Japanese artists. These are kind of historic images, Yukio prints, some beautiful things, all printed from cut woodblocks and inked using watercolor, inked using water-based um, inks as opposed to oil-based inks. So that is what our activity is based on today. It's based on Japanese um, woodblock printing. But as you've already got to know, instead of we're using this traditional wood plywood, we're going to use Tetra Pak. So uh, I'm going to start, I'll just run through the equipment we're going to use. So we've got Tetra Pak. Did, um, presuming most of you had a little look on that list of equipment, um, I'll kind of, I didn't bring my box of Passata, but I have got a heavy book, which actually just so happens to be a beautiful book about Japanese woodblock printing. I found on our shelves um, just a little while ago. I'm going to use that as one of my weights. The second weight I've got is this lovely piece of um, heavy, that's a real paper weight that somebody gave to me. Um, so that's gonna be my second weight there. I've also got, um, I've got a wooden spoon. This one's actually quite a short wooden spoon. And I've got a couple of writing things, a biro and a pencil. I've got some watercolor paints. You can use any watercolor paints or you can use the ones in a tube. I've actually squirted some paints into this little kind of dish here. Um, so little bits of watercolor paint in there. This is the one I'm going to use. Also got um, a couple of brushes there, um, jar of water and a plate to mix my paints on. Some pairs of scissors. Uh, I've got another brush there just to kind of um, dip in the water. What else? Ah, dishcloth. And another curious thing. A Brillo pad. So, well, it's not exactly, it's kind of like wire woolly, scratchy kitchen scour thing. Just move that over there. And what else? Dishcloth here. It's got a little cloth there in case I need that. And the one thing I forgot to put on the list on the uh, web page was really useful to have a little bit of washing up liquid. Okay, so these are my, that's my kind of basic kit that we're going to use. And I'm going to show you a little example of um, the kind of thing that, that I'm going to do. So this is one I made earlier in true Blue Peter style. So based on this image by Hokushai, can everybody see that? So he did 36 views, as Kate reminded me today, of Mount Fuji. And this is view number uh, Fuji in clear weather. So that's, that's that one. And we're actually going to do a version of that. Well, I'm going to do a version of that. And this is how our version gets put together. So we've got kind of, it starts off like that. 
and then we've got a little bit more color so it starts off just with a kind of red of the mountain then we add a little bit of yellow so that you've got more of the yellow a little bit of the green down the bottom then you can see i've put some darker bits on the top of the mountain there and some green at the bottom and this is what the sky is so the sky comes in behind and then when it's all together it looks like that so we've i've made this by printing and over printing in oh, uh, sorry Serena. some yeah. people can't see both screens ah don't know why Hold on, Katie's just going to help with the... If you could show the paper on the other camera. Okay, so go yeah, that I way. Yeah, I told them to pin the video. Pin the video, okay. So this is, um, so that was our view. Yeah, just send messages in the chat box. If you, anything you're sure, not sure about, I've got the lovely Katie to help me. So that's our Mount Fuji. And um, this is my Blue Peter style picture I made earlier. And we do, we're going to do this in traditional Japanese um, mokahanga. You would, you would print it not in several layers like this. Um, you do a little bit of layering, but because of the way we're going to do it, so we're adding a little bit more each time. So we're over printing, that's the sky. And that's the print when it's come together. Did everybody see that? You write in the chat, you bring everybody in the chat box. Okay, fabulous. Right then. Now, this, these are the two bits that I used to make my print. So two bits of Tetra Pak. Right, where do we start? Where we start is we start with our block and a pair of scissors. So you guys can get your Tetra Pak and you can start to cut it up. Um, we literally just want to cut it open so we've got some nice, a nice open, whoops, yep, I have washed it out so there's no milk coming out. <laughs> Let me cut this up, I'm going to shake on, oh, there's stuff coming out of there. I'll never look at Tetra Paks the same way again. Oh, thank you, Diane. that's brilliant. Fantastic. A little kitchen paper there. Let's cut this up. So initially, you're just going to open it out like that. And I'm going to use a dishcloth just to dry that off. Obviously, I don't want the bit with the with that on it, so I'll cut that off. Just cut it up the side there. Like that, get rid of that bit. Okay, one filleted Tetra Pak. So to help keep things in order, I've got a bit of a I haven't got a kitchen table. We've put some paper down here so you don't have too much glare on the screen. So I'm putting this little bit of plastic down just to kind of go under there while I use some water. Right, so I've got my Tetra Pak. Now, the thing about Tetra Pak is where you, you can see it's a foil surface and it's quite shiny. And we're going to use watercolor paints as our ink. So we need to kind of slightly roughen that up a bit so that the watercolour will actually sit on the foil lining of the Tetra Pak. Way to do that is, this is where your bit of metal scourer comes in and a little bit of water. So a little bit of water on there, just splosh it on. Tiny bit of washing up liquid 
on there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get our wire wool and gently scour the Tetra Pak. The idea is not to really go through the foil, but just to gently um, kind of abrade the surface. So you, it's a little bit um, like an ice skate, skater, just kind of roughing up the surface. And you'll find that you'll get bubbles. So you get your, and you kind of want to really give it a good going over to make um, really kind of break up the foil a little bit. What you don't want to go do is you don't want to go through the foil to the card underneath. You're just literally kind of gently scouring the surface of the foil. So I'm going to give this a really good going over. So you can turn your turn it round. Tetra pack is useful for all sorts of printmaking things. You can use it for dry point, you can use it for relief, you can use it for collagraph. It's an amazing material, really useful. So this will just break up the surface. You'll probably see that your Tetra Pak has got lots of creases and folds and wrinkles in it. I wouldn't worry about that because it kind of gives your what you print from it quite an interesting texture. Can everybody hear me okay? Just send Katie a message in the chat if you can't hear. So, dishcloth is next, and what we're going to do is just wipe off the soapy bits from the Tetra Pak, and you'll probably see that the surface has got, it's kind of scoured now, it's got some little scratches and kind of marks on it. Any chat there, Katie? Someone can't see. Ah, okay. Can you not see at all? No, I can't. I have two cameras on my screen now. Yeah, one's a bit closer. It seems fine. Okay, okay. Sorry, guys. So what happened now? Is it, is it the LPW? Ah. Can everybody see? Yeah? Okay, right. Okay. So we've got a piece of Tetra Pak that's kind of scoured. Just checking that that camera's still in the same place. Yes, it is. Um, and you'll see it's kind of a little bit um, messed up. So it's not got that nice, clean, oily. It's a kind of little bit matte and it's a little bit damp, but the idea is not to go through all of the foil. Is everything working, Katie? Brilliant. Okay, look. Now, before we start cutting away at this, I'm going to, I've got some little scrap bits here just to demonstrate to you how this process works. So for example, I have cut a piece of Tetra Pak to this star shape. So you can cut, cut it to any shape. We'll start, we'll use this bit just to show you how the process works and then we'll move on back to making an image. Um, but this will just show you how you get from Tetra Pak to a print. So I'll pop those to the side for the moment. That's my melting, I need that now. Put that to the side. The paper we can use is kind of any old paper, really. This is just photocopy paper. 
You could use something much nicer than this. We were doing this morning, we were doing some um, Japanese, um, using Chinese and Japanese thin tissue papers to laminate onto thicker surfaces. You could use those kind of papers for this as well. So some, but you need something quite thin that um, you can hand burnish. So this piece I'm going to use to as my registration sheet, registration, what that means is a way of getting things in the right place. So for example, if I want this image of a star right in the middle, what I'm going to do is take my pencil and just put that there. I'm hoping that is a good place to put it and draw round the star like that. Just hold it steady while I draw around it. And what I've got on the paper is a piece of paper with a picture of a star on it, like that. So that is my piece of paper that everything's going to fit to. Now, this is my little stack of paper to print onto here. And the next thing I'm going to do is take one of my pieces of printing paper and put it exactly on top, corner to corner, on top of that piece of paper that I've drawn on. And this is where your heavy weights come in, because we need to make sure that this thing doesn't move around. We need it to be where it's supposed to be and to stay there. So this is where a book comes in handy, heavy book of some kind. I'm just going to pop that along one edge there, like that. And then I'm going to peel back my sheet that I'm going to print onto and put it there and put a weight on top. And this could be your tin of passata, your tin of baked beans, your paperweight, your anything that's kind of heavy to keep that um, from flopping back. Okay, so that's your registration sheet. This is the paper that you're going to print onto. And I've lost my star, it's here. And the your printing element is going to go in there, face up, Okay, like that, Fit that round, which way does it go? Kind of, it's not a perfectly cut star, so I can't remember which way around it goes. Aha, uh -huh. okay, like that. So that's how my star's going to go there. Now, you probably spotted that we haven't got any ink on this. So this is where your watercolor comes in. Now, to help with um, the watercolor, stick to this. So we've got two things. We've scoured it a little bit and we're also going to use again a tiny bit of washing up liquid in your water there. Just a little bit. With traditional Japanese mokohanga, you actually use rice paste, um, which is called nori, to help to create the right kind of um, ink. But we're sort of doing a bit of a riff on that. So just a tiny bit of washing up liquid will break up the surface tension of the watercolour and enable it to stick much more happily to your piece of um, touch pack. Okay, so now I think, and to get a bit of ink, actually what I might do, Katie, is put this underneath there. That will help actually. I put this piece of perspex underneath and say, because I've got paper on the table to help with um, the glare from the camera. It's, it's great, but then it's not so useful for when you're using water. So I'm going to put that there. Can everybody see that? Yes, you should be able to see that. So I've got my book there. Peel back the paper. That's the better. So now I can use this bit of the table for doing the putting the ink on. So I've got my bit of touch pack face up. Okay, so we're going to put some watercolour paint on it. So how about we have some green? 
Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to have your, you don't want to over ink it. You just want to kind of paint into your, paint into the Tetra Pak like that. And you'll find that the, that it does resist it a little bit, but that's okay because it's going to give you some kind of textures. It's not like printing with printing ink, it's very different. So can you see that star? So it's got, it's got the paint on it. It's kind of pulling back a little bit, but I'm not troubled by that at all. Can you see that there? So you can just see the kind of foil through, coming through. Now I'm going to line it up on top of my registration sheet. Uh, which way did it go? Quite important to get it the right way around. I should have cut a symmetrical star, which I didn't. Um, where's the one to get? Okay, that's the way around. That'll do. Right, so I've got that in position. Now I need a wooden spoon. And I'm going to let this paper drop back onto there. Just hold it with my hand and then use the wooden spoon to burnish the ink onto the paper. So if you've got any questions, pop them in the chat box. Like that. Okay. I'm going to lift up the paper. And just move the book off for a minute. And now you can see that printed onto the paper is the star like that. There we go. So it's printed onto the paper. That's basically how the process of printing works. So you've got your piece of Tetra Pak, you're going to paint watercolour onto it and then line it up and it's going to face up. Now the great thing about having your, this registration sheet is that you can create several, so you can make maybe six or seven prints of where your block is in exactly the same place each time you put your paper down and put another sheet on top like that. You put your weight number one, you fold that back, you put weight number two, you ink this up again. So we'll do that again. And you'll probably find that the first time you ink it up, the paint doesn't stick so well as it does the second time. So you can see this time that that's actually inked up a little bit better. So the watercolour is a little bit happier to go onto the Tetra Pak the second time. So then again, you can pop your star down, pop your shape down, let that fall down. Use your spoon just to burnish it like that, lift that back, and then it's another print. So you've got two. So you can create several sheets. Now, if we go back to our, the one I made earlier, uh, so I printed, first of all, I printed the red mountain. And I printed quite a few of those. One, two, three, four. I printed four sheets like that so that I'd be able to show you what the print looks like as it gradually builds up. So this is done by overprinting. So taking the block and then printing over the top of what I've already printed. So let's have a look at that. So pop that inside. Now, as you saw earlier on, I'm just gonna have a little bit of a tidy up because the tricky thing about this isn't printing from Tetra Pak, it's actually working within this little lot inch of film space. So 
If you can't see, just send Katie a message. So they say, I've cut my Tetra pack into a, an image and I've made a sheet that's got an outline of that image. So let, let me take you through that bit. So I created an image. Yeah. So for example, here's my bit of Tetra pack. And I actually drew an image of Hokusai's kind of mountain, Mount Fuji like that. And then I cut it up out of the paper into a little piece like that and then used the biro to draw around it. And what it does, the biro is not gonna be happy about sticking onto the Tetra pack. So don't forget this piece has already been scoured with the wire wool and the washing up liquid. So I drew around onto there and then cut it out with the scissors. I'm going to do this roughly, but you could take a lot more time and be really careful about it. So that gave me this piece here. And then obviously I needed the second bit. So I took this piece and got another piece of my pack that had already been scoured. You see that's kind of got that sort of rough texture. And I took my piece here and then drew around that. Cut that out, cut around that line. And then that gave me the second part. So I've got two bits of Tetra pack. Katie's nodding, is that right? Fantastic, okay. So I started with printing this bit. So to make the registration sheet, which is what you need, this is really important to have that sheet. What I did is I put these two bits on the paper, line them up exactly where I want them on this, where are they going to print on this piece of paper? Then I've got this heavy weight really useful you'll find it's really useful to have weight so i'm going to put that down there actually uh can you see that mm, maybe i'll put it on that one first put it on there to hold this one take that one away then got the pencil it's going to draw around this shape here so that i know exactly where that is on the paper Move that up again. Draw around that. And you might want to start, as I did, by just working out, having a little play with a really simple shape and then thinking, what can I do? What interesting things can I do? What kind of image can I create? Then I can put that second bit back. And I can probably just hold this with my fingers because I've only got to do two sides. Three sides, three sides, yeah. Okay, so that's how I made the registration sheet for the mountain. So that's going to go there. I've got my two bits there. Is everybody keeping up? <laughs> so the next thing to do, let's just have a little bit of a tidy. Get these bits over here. Um, people, is anybody um, doing it at the same time? Do you want to write in the chat room? Tell me. All oh, right, to write to Serena. Yeah, yeah. to everybody. So, hi, yeah, to so write to everybody. Yeah. Oh, brilliant, perfect, the goldfish, I love it. Okay, fantastic. So if you want me to stop and have a break, 
while you catch up, just write in the in the chat box to go today. Stop. Can you hold on a minute? I'll just tidy this bit up while we do that. Get those bits out of the way that I've finished with. All right, get that out of the way. So, got all ready to print now. Print the mountain. So I've a little nice little stack of paper here. I've got my two bits of the mountain. And I think I'll start with this bit again. So down there. And it's always good to get organized with printmaking. You'd think I had a tidy house. Aha. Not so. Right, so now let's go have some fun. So looking at the um, Hokusai image, I kind of noticed that um, it's sort of orange in the middle here, and then it's yellowy at the bottom, then it moves into green, then it's kind of a dark green there. And then at the top, it kind of goes a little bit dark right at the tip here. And obviously the sky, again, it's really dark at the top, and then it gets lighter as it goes down to the bottom. It's also got lots of textures. I'm not going to, um, you can actually, you could probably get a little bit of a, a cotton wool and white bits out. You could get really com complex with this. I'm not going to worry about that at this moment. But we're going to put these on as layers. So I'm not going to try and paint the this in one go. What we're going to do it is in several layers. So first, we could start with this kind of yellow colour. So let's do that. So soapy water in the, can people see that uh, bit of yellow there, with a bit of red there. The goldfish, that would be a really nice thing to paint, some lovely colours, and you could, I guess you could have lots of goldfish, couldn't you? You could draw around your goldfish several times to make a little aquarium and have them all different colours. So, don't do that Serena, paint the um, it's not that. So we're going to put some paint onto the mountain here. So this is just yellow to start with. And I think the yellow can come down the bottom as well, because the yellow could go under the green. So that's painted. Then I'll take my piece of paper and pop it on there, line it up to the corner each time. That our heavy book put on top. Hold that back. And put on there. And this goes face up inside that, inside your lines, and then just let that drop down. And you can use your spoon to transfer it onto the paper. That. So I will take a couple of prints. So that's our first. That's got just the yellow on it there. You see that? You see that? Just the yellow. Pop that to the side. I might do another one. So let's do. Let's have a couple of variations on on a theme. So let's put some more yellow on there. Do say if you can't hear me, won't you? This is all an experiment. The Tetra Pack is probably easier than the technology. Okay, pop that in the middle there. And you can be really kind of um, experimental with this. What I love about the, um, the Tetra Pack is you can see all those kind of creasy bits in the foil. And what it's done here is it gives you that beautiful texture in the print. Something very pleasing about that. So line that up again. Oh, hang on. I haven't got somebody here, some small person to say, stop, you didn't put the paper down. Put the paper down. Really important to put the paper down before you put your block down so you can get everything lined up like that. Line that up. Line that back. So hopefully we'll be able to do this soon for real life again with all you guys in the workshop but for now this will have to do all right wooden spoon katie 
bunny. Oh, amazing, a bunny. Wow, did you plan that? Oh, did, you, did you plan that image? Sarah? Sarah Allsop's doing a rabbit. You have to share them. When you've done your prints, share them at this. Yeah, take pictures as you go along. Share it on all the social media things. So now, giving that a good... Thanks, okay, so we've got a couple of... And this one, whoops, let's see. It's slightly different to that one. You can see that's got a little bit of a red thing in the middle and that's got more of the yellow there. So we can put the next color on. You can, if you want, each time clean this off, but you might not need to. I'm not going to worry too much because all these colors are going to kind of blend together. Right, next, I think I'm gonna head for the red. So I'm going to paint the red onto the mountain like that. And I'm not gonna put any red down the bottom because um, in fact, I might wipe a little bit of that off. But actually at the bottom, it's definitely green, not red. So maybe I'll put a bit more yellow down the bottom. So that's my painted block. Now, this time I'm going to take one of the ones I've already printed, line that up on top, corner to corner, pop the heavy book there, reel that back. Oops, need to go over a little bit further. And Now, I think if you did this on some really fancy paper and sent it to somebody, they wouldn't know that you printed it from a tech pack. Right, so carefully get that in there. Let that fall back. A little bit with the block. There. Oh, this is the exciting bit. I get really pleased when I see something like this. It's amazing. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. <laughs> Jubilee, you can see all those lovely textures. You can see all the beautiful textures of the watercolor. It's very satisfying. Let's do another one. Now, some of you who know me kind of know that I tend to do things that tend to be a little bit more technically challenging. Um, and complicated. And when I'm doing this, I think, well, why do I? Why don't I just do touch back? And, and um, so you can play around a bit, you know, you kind of, I'm taking liberties with Hokusa. I don't know what he thinks about that. Right, so here's the next one. So I can get that other one that I printed as well. Line this up on here. Okay, put my book on there. Feel that back. Okay, are you having fun, people? Send us a message. Top. Righty. Okay. Now, as I say, if you were with us this morning uh, for the um, paper laminating, you could do this onto your thin paper and um, then very carefully laminate it onto a thicker paper. But if you did that, what I advise you to do is instead of using watercolor, to use, as I suggested this morning, use acrylic paint, because when you re-wet it, you won't have a problem with the colors dissolving when you re-wet with the glue. People that weren't here this morning will think, what is she talking about? So oh, another awesome, exciting thing now. Okay, so that's our second print there. And you can see they're actually quite identical, but they're similar. So there's two prints there. So now I'm going to move on to the green. This I probably want to clean off now. Um, this rag is hardly wet at all. It's kind of just damp because I don't want to get this piece of material too wet. 
Let's go green. Everything all right? We had a message from Sarah's eight-year-old daughter, Bella, <laughs> saying it's way better than school. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bella, I have to agree. Yeah, I, di I didn't think school was much fun either. Oh, there you go. We do here at the workshop. We we do lots of things with Tetra Pak. So um, yeah, it's a really useful thing. You can do some amazing things if you've got a printing press with Tetra Pak. Right. So I'm going to move on to the greens now. I've got a little bit of blue. I've got some green. Um, I've got some yellow in there as well. Yeah, it's actually quite. So now I'm going to paint. Bottom bit green. There we go. Go on then, Fiona. Is it a good idea to wait for the paper to dry in between each colour? Well, that's a, it is a really good idea and it does get quite wet. However, you might find that you're kind of hanging around, but yes, you could. If you've got a plan, if you kind of did a sort of, you can get quite sophisticated with this technique. So you could actually, um, yeah, build up an image slowly um, and let the color dry in between. The paper will move a little bit. It will stretch a little bit. So it's not a technique that's gonna enable you to be really, really precise. So working wet on wet, it means that the thing will fit together a little bit more because the paper will stretch a little bit and it will stay there. If, as it dries, it shrinks back again. So things might not line up exactly, but this isn't an exact process. So, but yes, you can do that. Because I mean, when we were doing those tests this morning, the paper did get a bit soggy. Yeah. So good question, keep them coming. Right, so we're gonna put some green on like that. I can't wait to see your images. You're gonna have to share them on, um, Instagram or Twitter or whatever it is. I haven't got Instagram. I know about Twitter, but not Instagram. And um, then we can see what you've made. I don't know if any of you have been to one of our, our work, our normal pop-up print events here, but it's really lovely when we can pin everything up and see what people have done. Okay, so this is our green going on. That drop down and use the spoon. There. Okay. Oh, lovely. That's my green. Yeah, now before I do the next one, I'm going to show you something else I did. Um, this was actually another design I made, and that was actually a repeat pattern. So using a little drop, which I have lost, um, I kind of made some discs and a block and I drew around it to make a repeat pattern. So you can actually, you know, kind of use this to make patterns as well as images. You can use it to do anything really, but that's another thought. And I also had a bit of fun with my star when I was practicing how it might work, just randomly overprinting. So those are other, other ideas. So let's put green on here. Or well, maybe we might, maybe we might not have green on this one. Maybe we might just stick with the red mountain because there were 36 views, is that right? So maybe I'm going to make these two different things at this stage. So instead of pushing that green there, Maybe. So okay. Diana. Okay, Diana. Did you say that inside the protective plate has foil? I am in the US and can't tell if it's like a milk carton or if the foil inside is critical. Uh, okay, so your milk carton is it a kind of waxed thing, maybe? As long as inside doesn't necessarily have to be foil, but as long as inside it is um water. Yeah, so it's, it's a waxy cotton. Lucky you, we used to have waxy cotton to make great firelighters, but now it's all this Tetra Pak. So Tetra Pak's got a kind of foil, foil like laminated onto. Um, but yes, as long as it's something that will hold liquid, it will be fine. Just need to roughen the surface a little bit so that it um, will take the watercolor. But yeah, give it a go. Amazing, in the States, fantastic. Well, nobody from the States was ever in in one of the workshops. So that is um, absolutely incredible. 
Oh, you're very welcome. This is fun. Yeah, so I'm going to make this one slightly different to the other one. I think I put too much water on there, so I'm just going to take a little bit off. So that'll be two slightly different ones. So take that off there. Put my block on there. So what time is it in America at the moment? Is it um, lunchtime? States. Whereabouts are you in America? <laughs> Canada, amazing. That is absolutely fantastic. Oh, we'd love to go to Canada. That is incredible. Wow, this is looking very exciting. So I'm quite particularly excited about the, what the crease in the carton is doing to give me that lovely, lovely kind of crease. Can you see that? So there's a sort of crease that's generating a bit of a kind of um, a path up this mountain. So I've got two, one with green and one without the green there. So I think I might add something. I think I kind of want to add something just to knock that green down a bit because it's a little bit bright, isn't it? So let's go back and maybe put a little bit more yellow on there as well. 1 p.m. Oh, all right. Well, here it's 10 to 6. So um, now everybody who was watching Twitter yesterday might have seen me having a birthday. So thank you very much for all of that. That was really lovely to um, be celebrating a birthday internationally. OK, so I'm going to put a little bit more yellow on this. And I might kind of just muddy that up a bit so that it's Quite, not quite so clean because it's looking a little bit sort of um how are the goldfish coming along Let's tell me how your goldfish are <laughs> maybe they're stirring up the silt from the bottom possibly right then so i think for the first colour, you're probably getting a little bit, yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. So that kind of green has added a sort of dark bit at the bottom, oxide mountain. Mount Is it a volcano? All right, I'm, I'm right, it's a volcano. So I've got my two prints there, I'm going to move on to the sky. So I actually, when I made this, these two bits, they're actually printed, cut out from two different bits of the Tetra Pak because you might find it a little bit annoying that there are wide bits and there are skinny bits and sometimes that gets in the way. Um, so I think I used two of that bit. I uh, can't quite remember, but basically I didn't cut them both out of the same rectangle, which gave me a little bit more. You can see that drops down a little bit there. So it kind of gave me a little bit more, but yeah. I don't know if you can get bigger cartons than this made out of the same material. Can you? Maybe you can, you think you can. Yeah, so maybe if you, if you have Tetra Pak that is actually bigger, then you won't be troubled by these lines. So that's a thought, you can, you can look out for that. Okay, so we're going to move on to the sky now. Um, I've realised I'm getting a bit short of blue, so why don't I use some of these paints as well? How could you make dark outlines? Dark outlines? Mm, I think with a felt tip pen. That's not very helpful, is it? Possibly using a different technique. Um, possibly using carbon paper over the top. So I think what we could do, hold that thought. Right, that's a really interesting thing. So, 
what I've done, I've just gone to the cupboard and I've got some carbon paper. Like that. And I've got some piece of tracing paper. Probably that one would be better. So maybe what we could do is, here's the one I made earlier. Put that down there, put the tracing paper on top, get our weight and trace over that. So that we know where the shape of the object is. Then put your carbon paper underneath. And then see if that's worked. Yeah. So can you see I put some little lines at the top of the mountain? Just there? Can you see those? Yeah. So that would be a way to do it. A piece of tracing paper just to show you where your outline is and then some carbon paper. So that might be the way to go for adding adding lines. And of course, the, the way we're writing this, you could actually put some words on there and they'd be the right way round because of the way we're, we're writing. Right, so shall we move back to our sky? We've got five more minutes to create these masterpieces. Get that glue. And now I've got this bit here. What have I done with my shoot? So put that back there. Line up one of these on top. So while you're there, while I've got your attention, I'm going to do a quick plug for the Left Print Fair. What we've got happening. Katie's putting her head in her hands. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of promotion, Leicester Print Fair, all weekend um, online, www.makeprints.co.uk. Just a quick plug. Right, so we're going to do our sky now. So we've got some glue. So you don't want it too, too wet, but actually you can be quite expressive with the sky. I don't know what the sky is like in Canada. Here it's been kind of nice to get today, really, but um, it's cold here at the moment. Right, so I'm just gonna use this top there. Minus five. Minus five. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, that's cold. That's cold. Oh sunny. That'd be nice. Now I need to just close back a bit more. Okay, so there's my number one. Now I've obviously kind of not really covered that very well. So I think I'm gonna to need to go over that again. Can you see I've got a bit of a white halo around my mountain? So I think the next layer is going to get rid of that. So second layer of blue. And I'm gonna make sure that that covers that up. Kind of really brushing it into the edges there. Just 
International Weather Channel, I love it. That is truly amazing. Right, so we're going to put out. Oops. I haven't got some. So usually, if I'm if we're doing this in the workshop, there's always going to be some really helpful small person saying, "No, stop, stop! You're doing it in the wrong order." Right, okay. Line the paper up. You think I'd know what I'm doing by now? Put that on top, and we'll do a second layer on the blue. Again, and that will. This paper is actually getting quite soggy now. Has anybody else paper getting a bit soggy? Um, so I'm just gonna... Okay, another question, go for so it. So you're using soapy water to yeah. make sure watercolour is fine, right? Well, only a tiny bit. There we go, I've covered up my blue my gap. Yes, the soap is really just to, um, you kind of hardly want any water on your brush. It's, it's almost, it's damp. The soap element just helps to break up the surface tension of the watercolour because it's not printmaking ink. It's um so Jill's paint is covering the petrol so Okay, so now Jill, two things. Either you've got too much water or you haven't scoured your tetrapack enough. But bear in mind you're not going to get a complete coverage like printing ink. So if you can see that it is a kind of mottled appearance it's not going to give you the flat smooth color of printing ink because it doesn't have the absorbency i'm hoping that helps Jill. but you'll probably find like a bit like with our green star I'll go back to my preprint for green star this one um had actually i'd used printed quite a lot from that block so if I go back to the first random collection of stars, here we go. So you can probably see those stars didn't print so well because the block was quite new. But actually, when the surface gets more abraded, it will take the ink a little bit better like that. It's never going to be completely smooth. And in a way, that's some of the charm of it. But if it is beading up a lot, it's because you've got too much water or you haven't really um, scoured the block quite enough. So we've got two blocks, two prints, that one and this one. And maybe I might do a different colour in the sky on this one. I can hear another question coming. No. Oh, you're really welcome. Before you go, you can donate in the button below the box and you can also buy these beautiful letter print workshop gift vouchers that i made to raise money for our fantastic workshop you only had oops, we spent five pounds or 130 or even lucky red mm -hmm. chinese color awesome to have you here so share your prints i've lost my hashtag thing now and visit our print fair yeah, go what for is it. the washing liquid used for? The washing liquid used for two reasons. One is you put a tiny bit in the water and that helps to break up the surface tension of the water so that the water doesn't bead up so much. It also was used with the um, wire pot cleaner to roughen up the surface and kind of clean it so that it takes it more receptive to the ink, to the paint. It's only a tiny, tiny bit. As I say, you would use some, um, traditionally you'd use um, uh, nori paste when you are, that's my brush. You'd use nori paste, rice paste, just to kind of help the Japanese, um, help the sort of water-based inks take a little bit um, better. Right, this I think is going to be the last layer of ink on here. Um, so that's going to go on there. That's going to go on there. And I think, as I say, we might have a slightly different sky for this one. Let's 
a bit romantic and just put a little bit of this is a stormier Mount Fuji maybe just a tiny bit of colour there. Let's see what happens. Pop that there. Pop that over. And you don't have to use the spoon. You might just want to very gently rub it with your fingers. See what that looks like. Oh, that's interesting. So that's my second image there. So that's kind of got some yellow and blue and it's some really got a sense of the watercolor there. So I've got two different versions of Mount Fuji. Gone on. Okay, so that's it guys. It's been absolutely amazing having you all here from all over the world. Um, Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming to visit our workshop. Thank you to my wonderful assistant, Katie, on the technology. And um, enjoy your creative moments in your lockdown. And hopefully see you soon. And donate if you can. Push the button at the bottom and donate. Does it